What's up everybody? Welcome to Queer Girl Straight Skates. I'm Rebel and today I'm going to be talking to you about ways to still feel like you're part of the skate community even when you are injured. Trust me, there are ways. I promise. Just keep watching. Straight Skates is a YouTube channel full of roller skating reviews, tutorials, general roller skating lifestyle videos, injured skaters playlists, and all sorts of fun stuff. I don't know if you're new here, but if you are, welcome. I highly recommend that you hit that subscribe button. When you do, I hope that you would also hit the notification bell so that you can get notified when I post, because I post every Tuesday and I have lots of fun videos, and then I go live on Sundays. So anyways, that's Queer Girl Straight Skates. Enjoy. Today I'm gonna to give you five ways that you can feel more connected with a skate community even if you are unable to skate. So the first way that you can get involved with the skate community or feel apart or feel at home again is by finding injured skaters groups. So on Facebook, there are two that I know of that are injured skaters groups that are specifically groups catered to people who have just gotten injured, who have long-term injuries or chronic illnesses. The reason why I advocate for these Facebook groups and other groups so hardcore is because in these groups, you're able to find other people who are experiencing the same thing that you are experiencing. Even if they don't have the same exact injury, from my experience, what I've been learning is that all of us kind of have this similar up and down feeling that we're going through. And at any given time, we might be at a severe low or a really great high. And whatever stage we're at, if we're able to talk to other skaters who understand that experience, then we are going to just feel less alone. And I think that that's really important. And so getting involved in these groups or even going to different like places where injured skaters are having meetups. I know a lot of roller derby leagues will have injured skaters meetups. I know that there are also injured skaters rollouts, obviously when the world is opened back up. But there are places where you can go and skaters you can reach out to because guess what? All of us get hurt at one point or another and we like to help each other out. So find yourself the injured skater community and get involved. Feel your feelings and say them out loud and talk to other skaters because just because you're injured doesn't make you any less part of the skate community than when you are actually rolling on your skates. Because guess what? Getting injured is literally a part of the roller skating experience. I don't know any roller skaters who haven't been injured in some level or another. Everyone gets injured, whether it is a scrape on the knee or a serious injury, like everyone experiences that because we are throwing our bodies around. We are rolling around. We're doing all this random hardcore stuff. Like, of course you're going to get hurt and we support you in that. The second way you can feel part of the skate community without actually skating is by finding other ways besides actually rolling to participate in the skate community. So right now, the skate community is primarily online. Sometimes it's in person, but it's very much so in small groups in person. And online, there's so much you can do that doesn't specifically involve skating. We're talking giving advice to other skaters if they ask for it. We're talking mentorship. We're talking skate maintenance. We're talking participating and commenting on other people's stuff. All sorts of things that you can do that is still engaging with the community, but may not necessarily be skating. What I'm trying to get to you in this point is I don't want you to run away from the skate community. I don't want you to isolate yourself. You can still talk to other skaters. Like your credibility as a skater doesn't go down because you've gotten an injury. In fact, maybe it goes up. I don't know. I don't make the rules. I just think that it sometimes can be really scary and feel like 
you're a bad skater or something because you got injured, but that is not the case. That does not mean that you do not have value to contribute to the skate community. So I do not want you to run away. Just dive deeper in. And if you need help, if you're scared, if you're feeling bad, I want you to reach out to the skate community because guess what? So many skaters wanna to talk to you. They want to find ways to make you feel included and there are so many ways. I've been making videos for the last month and absolutely none of them are on skates, none of them. I am just talking about different aspects of the skate community. I'm doing skate maintenance. I'm reaching out to other skaters within the community. And if I can do it, then you can do it. The next way to participate in the skate community without skating is to be a photographer or a videographer or someone who edits. And I know this sounds like what you want me to like help other people get clips. Yes, I want you to help other people get clips. Um, because here's the thing, we as skaters can't really take our own clips. So we need someone else to do it. And we also can't really take our own pictures. We could do selfies or we could like set it up, but it's not as fun as having someone else take pictures or film you. Like these things are so much more fun when you do it with other people. And I'm not saying that you have to be a professional photographer. You literally do not have to be a professional. All you have to do is be a willing heart and have hands to be able to hold the camera. That's it. That's all you gotta do. And I think that you will find a little bit more joy in that than you think that you are going to. I have found so much joy in filming and taking pictures for Shove when she's skating around because I really want to be skating around and I can't do that right now. So I'm going to make sure that she has the best, the cutest little edits ever because I can't do it for myself, which is sad, but also being a photographer is okay. I like it. And I can tell you this, it is much more fun and much more encouraging to do like whatever trick you're working on in front of another person who can encourage you and be a support and be like, hell yeah, you killed it, than in front of a tripod holding up a camera. It is so good to have that encouragement and it really makes people skate better, to be honest. And so be that support system for someone else. That's such an important part of the skate community that we need desperately. And you can fill that gap. And one day, people will do it for you. Number four is that you can observe and learn. Now, depending on what stage you're at in your recovery, you might be struggling to watch skate clips and skating in general. And that's okay. If you're not there yet, then this step is not for you right now. But if you are at a point where it's no longer super painful for you to watch other people skate, uh, then what you should do is you should spend a lot of time watching other people skate. Whether it's watching people skate outside at the park or skate down the street or watching videos of people skating, doing that will teach you so much. Something that me and Shove both do is when we see someone doing a trick that we wanna learn, we'll take that, we'll screen record it, and then we'll slow it down and just watch it over and over again to try and figure out what steps that skater is doing or which way they're turning or how they're stepping onto something or how they're moving. Because the more you study it, it's like, studying gameplay. You're gonna be more in tune with it once you actually are able to get onto your skates and try those tricks. Studying and visualizing is half the battle. And so you're still able to study and visualize, observe, learn, and then when you are able to put on your skates, you're gonna be that much better of a skater and you're gonna really be prepared to jump into whatever it is that you want to start trying to accomplish. And the fifth and last thing that you can do to be a part of the skate community without actually being on skates is to know your limits. So as, as exciting as it is to be re-entering the skate community, whether it is mentally or physically or online or in person, there are going to be things that are triggers for you that weren't there in the past. Maybe it is the way that you got injured. 
Maybe like that specific trick or that specific thing that you were doing is hard for you. Maybe you can watch people skate for a certain amount of time, but after a certain time limit, you start just letting it negatively affect you so it gets you down instead of brings you up and giving you hope. It's important to be very self-aware in that moment. You have to listen to yourself and know like, okay, is this too much for me? And if it's too much for you, cut it off. Stop it. Make sure that you're listening to yourself and give yourself grace in that moment to say, hey, you know what? I've been observing and learning and this is awesome, but I can't do it anymore. I'm feeling overwhelmed. Or maybe you've been taking pictures and then at a certain point you're just starting to feel sad. Put the camera down. Go back inside and hang out. I think we have to understand that our journey is not going to be the same as anyone else's journey. And so make sure that you understand that and know that if your body is telling you, hey, slow down, stop, maybe just slow down and stop because you definitely want to catch yourself before falling back into like a vortex of sadness, which is something that I've experienced. I start watching videos on Instagram and I'm like, wow, this is so cool. I'm like watching so many people skate and like that's so exciting and I love looking at all the new skaters and talking to new people. But at a certain point, I have to shut that down because I start getting really sad and like depressed that I can't skate. And so let's make sure that we're listening to ourselves and listening to our minds and our hearts and our bodies above everything else. But if you wanted some things that you could do to get involved with that skate community without actually being on skates, I hope that this video was helpful to show you some options that you have. Um, if you have other ideas, please put them down in the comments for other people to see because I want as many options for people as physically possible. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you a little bit. If you would like to support me, you can buy something cool from Cheers to the Queers, my Etsy shop, or you can become a Patreon. I put out new vlogs every week, but most importantly, Cheers to the Queers! Okay, so the other day when I was trying to film over here, I moved my camera and then my camera, I like lost balance because crutches are hard and I the, the whole tripod with the camera fell over, smashed into the new coffee table and broke a candle and so glass just went everywhere. But because I can't navigate through my life, I just had to leave it there. And that's the reality of some days being injured.